Hey, you guessed it. I am doing the thank you next book tag. This song is a bop. I am a huge Ariana Grande fan. I have been following her ever since the day that she, the days that she played Cat on, ever since she played Cat on Victorious back on Nickelodeon, like years ago. I've been a fan since then, and I love her voice. And then I started following her YouTube channel, and she was doing covers. And I'm just like an OG Ariana Grande fan. So I just was so excited when someone created this tag. I will link the originator of this tag and their video in the description box. And without further ado, let's begin. Number one, name a book that you said thank you next to. I've got several books for this one. First one is Zenith. I have a whole video on that, which I will link right now if for some strange reason you haven't seen it yet. Second one is Uglies by Scott Westerfeld. I read that whole book and I was really interested way back when, when I first joined booktube on reading that series. There was like some hype around Scott Westerfeld at that time because of another book he wrote. So I was interested in that other book he wrote, so, but I wanted to read the Ugly series first, and that was one of the worst reading experiences of my life. I hated that book with a passion. So thank you, next. And lastly, I will mention Jane Unlimited by Christian Kishore. And this one makes me really sad because I love Christian Kishore and her Graceling series is one of my favorite YA series of all time, but I just could not get on the bandwagon with Unlimited. And I don't know what it is about that book. I will try to reread it again at some point in the future because I don't wanna just give up. Maybe it was at the time that I picked it up. Maybe I wasn't in the mood for it, but I just, thank you next, for now. I almost forgot one, Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. That was also another one of the worst reading experiences that I've had in quite some time. I read that book back in, I wanna say 2015, and it was just, I mean, the first, I would say chapter two was really compelling, and then as the story began to really, you know, kind of unfold itself, I just remember becoming extremely enraged at several points while reading. I know a lot of people really love that series and stand for it, but then a lot of people also hate that series, and I'm one of the people that hate it. It wasn't for me. Thank you, next. A more recent thank you, next, no, didn't like it, was An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson, I think is her name. And that one was a huge disappointment because I pre-ordered this book. I was so excited for it. Anything that has to do with fairies and the fairy world is like, I'm here for it. I am obsessed with fantasies that, fantasy plots that have anything to do with fairies. That's like my number one favorite. And it was just such a letdown. I actually DNF'd this book. I think I made it about 30 to 45% of the way through. And I honestly just lost interest. I was not interested in the main protagonist. I was not interested in her journey. I just stopped caring after a while. And I don't know, again, just like with um, Jane Unlimited, if I was just not in the mood for the story or it just wasn't what I wanted to read at the time and I was trying to force it. But that's another one where I'm saying thank you next to for now. So name a book that taught you love. Oh my gosh, one book that I read this year that I will talk more about in my favorites of 2018 is the first book in a series and happily all of the books in the series so far have come out this year so it has been a wonderful reading experience with this particular series. But this is the first book in the McLean Brothers series and it's called Let Me Love You by Alexandria House. And this book just checked off all of my wish fulfillment boxes. Like it was perfection. And I don't wanna go into too much detail. All of these books will be linked down below. They're Goodreads pages, but I will definitely discuss this more in my favorite books of 2018. So I don't wanna go into too much, but oh, I loved that book. Two more books that I wanna talk about that will also probably make it onto my favorites of 2018 list, and that is Infinity, which is in the Aerial Ethereal series. I think it's the start of a series, and it's by Krista Ritchie. 
this book was magical. This book basically took place in the circus and talked about like the circus family and the circus community and it was like a star-crossed forbidden romance type of deal and it was just so good. I cannot put it into words how good this book was. So once again it will probably make it onto my favorites of 2018 so I don't want to go into too much detail so I will just leave you with that and lastly a book by kennedy ryan of course made it onto this section because she is one of my new favorite authors and that book is hoops which is a long shot novel so i guess she's starting a new series called the long 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 shot series and this one is called hoops and this was another one that was just this is a new adult romance it was perfection from beginning to end i'm not going to ramble on too much because you're going to hear me gush about this in my favorites of this year but yes ah, love 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 number three is name a book that taught you patience and i interpreted this in two ways the first way is just like patience like waiting for it to come out like a highly anticipated long awaited release and for that one i chose restore me by tahera mafi oh my goodness i have been waiting for this release and i have been waiting for so long it came out on march 6th of this year and i literally almost cried when i held it in my hands the irony is i haven't even read it yet because i've been wanting to reread the entire shatter me series and unfortunately this series is in my storage and my storage is a mess and I've been meaning to go through my storage and organize everything and clean it out so when I do that probably at the beginning of 2019 I will reread the shatter me series and finally get to restore me but it was probably one of my most highly anticipated releases ever next to the final book in the to all the boys I love before series that one was also and then another way I interpreted this prompt is also like reading like really you have to be patient with the story and that for that i chose is she the reason by nako this is an urban fiction novel and it is a, an adult novel and the emotions and the roller coaster ride i took reading this book took so much out of me and i feel like this video is just a preview for my favorites of 2018 video because i'm definitely going to talk way more about is she the reason in that video but that book just took me on a whole journey and i was so angry at certain points and i just wanted the main female protagonist to win so badly because she had been just kicked so bad by life in this book and it just it took a lot of patience to just like root for her and wait out her happy ending it took a lot. Number four, name a book that taught you pain. Uh, oh my gosh, a book that taught me pain. <sighs> Twist Me, the entire trilogy by Anna Zayers. Zayers. I attempted to complete this trilogy via audiobook. I got pretty darn far. I had to stop halfway through the third and final book and I didn't complete it and I do not know if I will ever complete this series. I will say that the first book, like 55 to 60% of the first book literally was nausea inducing. It made me want to throw up. It made me sick to my stomach. This is probably one of the most de de disturbing reading experiences I have ever had in my entire life and I feel that it was only amplified by the fact that it was an audiobook I think if I was reading it it wouldn't been at, it would not have been as bad but the fact that it was an audiobook and there was a narrator there was a narrator speaking these words out loud I mean I almost threw up several times especially during that first book I was so disturbed so uncomfortable so nauseous so sickened so taken out of my comfort zone this was one of one of the craziest and most painful reading experiences i've ever had in a psychological mental emotionally effed up type of way and definitely let me know if you guys want me to make a full video about this i've been contemplating it for months and i think i'm finally ready and then the next series i chose for this question is one of my most like favorite fantasy series of all time and this is the Terran Soul series by C.L. Wilson. Reading this book at times just 
put me in so much emotional distress and turmoil and pain and I've definitely cried tears reading this series and just like wept and been so desolate and broken hearted by the events that have taken place in this series but it is what endears the series to me so much because the author is not afraid to really take the characters into some dark places and take the plot into some dark places and yet there's still light at the end of the tunnel and of course there is a happy ending and the good guys do win at the end but I cannot recommend this series enough it is one of my most favorite fantasy series of all time Number five is name a book that you loved at the time of reading, but in hindsight, you do not like as much anymore, but which you still learns, but which you still learn some other quality from. For this, I definitely chose the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy by by E.L. James. Um, I will say that I read the whole 50, Grays, uh, 50 Shades of Grey series before the hype, way before the hype. I read the series out of pure curiosity years and years ago before the film, before the book was even optioned for a film, before the craze caught on, um, right when she self-published them on Amazon, on the Kindle platform. And I read them because the books were being offered for like 99 cents or free or something like that. And I was just starting to get into that genre at the time and I was very, very curious and it just seemed interesting. So I read the trilogy, thril the trilogy really quickly. And I remember just flying through the books and highly enjoying them and finding them to be very like titillating, but also just like, you know, the romance and like Christian Grey being so tortured and Anna being so naive and how they grow together and how they change and just all of the aspects of the novel really enraptured me. It was like crack, you know, it was addictive, the series. But I do also remember that while I was reading it, I did find the writing style to be very silly and overly flowerly language and just the writing style wasn't to my particular taste and it was hard to take seriously at points, but the story just caught my attention to the point where I was able to somewhat ignore how much I didn't like the way the series was written. Well, fast forward to, you know, modern times today, and I have tried numerous times to reread the series and I just cannot get into it. It's really hard for me now to ignore the writing style. I just, I do not enjoy it anymore. But I will say that it did open the door for me to find more books in that genre that I enjoyed even more than Fifty Shades of Grey that were better written and more interesting and just of higher quality and so I do thank Fifty Shades of Grey for kind of opening that door into that genre for me because otherwise I would have never really been interested in exploring that so yeah there we go another honorable mention would be the selection series by Kira Cass that was a series that I was completely obsessed with a few years ago I read the first three books so quickly and it was like addictive um, the plot was so fascinating. I'm a huge fan of The Bachelor and The Bachelorette franchise. So, of course, that series was going to interest me because, ugh, oh my goodness. So, I read the first three books really quickly and it wasn't until the fourth book that came out that was about the daughter and it was so bad and so disappointing. I have a whole video about it. You can check it out right here. I will, you know, link it above. And that just killed everything for me and I have tried to reread the series and I just can't get into it anymore. But I do think that the plot was really interesting and inventive and I did get a lot of enjoyment out of it at the time. Number six is name a book that you are currently talking to, i.e. have the hots for. And... Honestly, for this one, I think I'm going to have to go with... All right, now you guys know me and you know I can never just pick one book. So um, a book that I'm pretty deeply into and that has intrigued me and captured my interest and I'm super uncomfortable right now with the events that I'm pretty sure are about to unfold, but maybe um, I will be taken by surprise, is And I Darken by Kirsten White. This book is definitely interesting and... I've talked a lot about it actually in one of my NaNoWriMo vlogs so I will link that right now if you want to see my thoughts on the book so far. I am like almost halfway through so there's that. 
another one, if you hear strange noises, it's Teddy. Becoming Michelle Obama. The lighting is making it look weird. There we go. Still making it look weird. Okay. Becoming Michelle Obama, like I'm really, really intrigued by her life. She is one of my personal heroes and I just admire her so much. So I had to get this book and yeah, so good so far. I'm only a few pages in. And then this one I started very recently and I'm only like a few pages in but I can already tell I'm going to be obsessed. And this one is The Last Namsara by Kristen, I can't say her last name. I'm so sorry, I don't even want to attempt it and butcher it, but it is about dragons and there are very few dragon fantasy books out that, to like at all, to choose from and currently this is the current one and I think I'm going to really love this one. So these are the three books that I'm currently talking to and I have the hots for. Last but not least is number seven, name a book that gone last or that's going to last you. The book that is the book of you. The book that helped you to love yourself just a little bit more. I'm playing with Teddy over here. He's, yep, there he is. All right, so for this one was pretty tough, but I think I have to go with, oh gosh, two options. The first one is Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Adeyemi. This is the ultimate representation for me as a Nigerian American, and it was so amazing to see, like, my country being represented, not my specific culture, because I'm not from the tribe that is the fantasy is based off of and the characters are based off of, but to see my country being represented and a culture that is similar and close to mine being represented in a book, in a young adult fantasy is like mind blowing. The next book that really touched me and that resonated with me a lot and was a very painful but extremely rewarding and profound reason reading experience is definitely Purple Hibiscus and that one is by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. That's probably one of my favorite books of all time. I definitely want to reread it soon and it just helped me really understand and love myself a little bit more. I feel like there's so many childhood reads I could pick for this one but I decided to go with these two more recent reads. Teddy wants to be in the video. That is it for the thank you next book tag. Thank you so much for joining me and I will catch you guys in my next video. Love you guys. Bye. 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 You got me. You got me. You got me. Are you happy now? <laughs> but without a plot, those conflicts cannot be fully fleshed out and plugged into the story. So I've been spending a lot of time just kind of going over in my head 